afternoon, guys. Um, for all of my Hobbit readers, I wanted to take some time and go over a few thematic things um, that we've encountered up until this point, and then um, go a little bit deeper into chapter five of The Hobbit, the chapter titled Riddles in the Dark, which is the chapter that um, you need to have completed by Sunday night in preparation for our discussions on Tuesday and also the discussion questions that are going to be posted. So I'm going to go over a little bit of background information and then get into the chapter and um, I will also be referring to the text itself to hopefully provide some context and make it a little bit more engaging and allow you, when you think about the, the questions for our uh, discussion boards and also our in-class discussions, you can go a little bit deeper with the ideas that Tolkien is exploring. Um, so we're gonna start um, with Bilbo's character up till now. So even from the beginning of the story, um, we've seen that there is a conflict that exists between um, the two sides of Bilbo, right? He has his bag inside, he has his took side um, from each side of his family. And um, we know that from his mother's side, right, from the took side, they've always been adventurers. Um, the book points out that although they were even wealthier than most of the people in Bag End and definitely wealthier than the Bagginses, they were also considered less respectable specifically because of their adventurous spirit. We had Bilbo's mother, Belladonna, and going all the way back to his um, late, earlier ancestors, Bullroarer, um, who we learned created the game, of golf, the game of golf. And it's this predisposition that existed uh, in Baggins, uh, sorry, Bilbo's family, that uh, led Gandalf to single him out as a uh, potential candidate to join the dwarves on their quest. And an interesting thing to note is even though Bilbo initially shies away from the idea of an adventure from the very beginning when Gandalf shows up he says no we don't want any any adventures and he seems to run away but he also invites Gandalf to tea the next day so even with that we see Bilbo is not completely shutting down the idea of the unknown, the idea of adventure. And when the dwarves show up at his front door, he doesn't send them away. He invites them in. So again, he's still kind of inviting in uh, adventure. And we see that in many cases, what makes Bilbo act in a bolder way, what makes him respond to his Tookish side is usually being challenged by something external. Um, so for example, in the, um, the initial uh, encounter with the dwarves, it um, simply takes them challenging whether he's up to the task, whether he is the right man for the job. And, um, it's interesting that every time he does step into his Tookish mode, there's always a, a comment on behalf of the author or said directly by Bilbo to himself where he seems to regret it. He says, Bilbo, what have you done? Bilbo, you put your foot in it now, etc." But once he's made up his mind that he is going to set on a course of action, um, he often goes even more boldly than he uh, expected that he would or that anyone expect that he would. Uh, as Gandalf says in the beginning, right, there's more to him than meets the eye. 
So up till now, there are four steps that Bilbo has taken on his path to sort of actualizing himself and also on his quest. And the first one, of course, was the decision to join the dwarves on their quest. Um, and we, of course, see that Gandalf kind of manipulated the situation. He lets Bilbo hear the dwarves talking about him, where they say he seems more like a grocer than a burglar. Gandalf, what were you thinking? Um, and it leads Bilbo to step in and say, wait a minute, uh, you know, I do have famous ancestors. I'm not afraid of an adventure. And so the very thing that he swore he would never do, next thing he knows, he finds himself literally on a horse off to places unknown. And the second step of the adventure um, is in the next chapter when uh, Thorin sends Bilbo out to uh, forage for supplies. And if you recall, they see the, the fire in the distance and Thorin turns to Bilbo and says, all right, burglar, it's time for you to prove yourself. It's time for you to take on the role that you were destined for. And again, Bilbo is initially reluctant but uh, because he is forced by the dwarves to take on this role, once he gets to the clearing and sees the trolls, um, not only um, does he agree to check things out, but then he tries to take the extra risk and attempts to steal one of the trolls' wallets um, to actually be a burglar. And of course, this ends up not well it ends up with them getting caught and um they need to be rescued by gandalf but it does show a an extra level of adventure and boldness on the part of bilbo um and as a side note even though the adventure with the trolls initially seemed like a a bad idea um bilbo by sheer chance it discovers the key that um, opens the door to the cave that then allows Gandalf and the other dwarves to be armed with the elvish blades. And even Bilbo right, is given a sword. Uh, well, it's a sword for a hobbit. It's a dagger for anyone else. Um, and so right, he is more of a, an actual adventure, an actual warrior even though he has not yet had a chance to use his weapon, he does now have the means uh, now to do so, which comes in handy, right, in um, the upcoming scenes. The third step in his adventure, um, which takes place, of course, in the cave, um, where they are captured by the goblins, and in this case, the adventure is, again, not one of Bilbo's choosing. But because he awakens from his bad dream, he's able to um, warn uh, Gandalf and the dwarves that the ponies are being taken, which allows Gandalf to react quickly. And even though the dwarves and Bilbo get captured, Gandalf does not. And... Um, this then allows Gandalf to sneak down and free them from the Great Goblin before they are eaten. And of course, ironically, it's what uh, sends the Great Goblin into uh, the greatest rage is finding the sword that um, Thorne had retrieved from the cave, which they completely were terrified of. And it's that same type of sword that Gandalf then uses to slay the Great Goblin. Um, the fourth adventure is most definitely um, one that Bilbo did not choose, right? They're in their, their mad dash to escape from the goblins. Bilbo's riding piggyback. He gets attacked from behind. He gets pulled off and he ends up falling and hitting his head, going unconscious. Um, rolls down the tunnel and he wakes up um, in a darkened cave tunnel. 
Um, and at this point, one of the biggest themes of The Hobbit uh, takes on an even greater um, importance. And one of the themes is the, the idea of chance versus choice uh, versus skill. So there are a lot of things that happen to Bilbo that happen purely by chance or fate, depending on how you want to look at it. Some of them happens um, because it is something that is chosen for him or that he chooses. And some of the things that happen are a result of Bilbo's skills and talents um, as a burglar later, and also just as a clever hobbit. Um, and the first example of something happening purely by chance right, is Bilbo finding the ring. He's groping around in the dark and he finds a round object on the ground and he puts it in his pocket because since his focus is survival and escape, you know, a ring does not seem, ironically, to be something that would help him. Um, and he pulls out his dagger and he sees that the dagger like um, the swords that Gandalf and Thorin had glow when there are goblins. So fortunately for Bilbo, there's a very faint glow, which means the goblins aren't close, but there is enough of a glow that he's able to find his way around. And the next question that arises is, you know, Bilbo's been living a very domestic, non-adventurous life, but by virtue of being a hobbit, um, he has certain qualities that enable him to be effective in his new situation. So um, when we start reading the chapter and reviewing it, I want you to think about what qualities uh, are inherent in hobbits and specifically in Bilbo that surprisingly actually make him in a good position to cope with this completely new adventurous situation. And finally, um, I wanted to point out that this is Bilbo's first cave adventure. There's another one that comes significantly later, but especially in these caves and caves in general, they tend to have a symbolism that go with them. And the symbolism of caves tend to be the unknown, the mysterious, um, the hidden, and especially in this case, the dangerous, right? The author talks about um, how these are caves that go, that are dug very, very deeply, and these mysterious um, creatures and dangerous creatures have crept up and remained in these underground caves that um, very few enter and even fewer um, emerge from. And that's what uh, leads, of course, to our next encounter where Bill 